dog just gets to lay there and be asleep. <laughs> it's sleep. We call it sleepy pee pee time. Right. Sleepy pee pee time. <laughs> it, it is martial art madness. And Cynthia Rothrock is here to join us on this very special live episode. Cynthia, thank you for joining us on our show once again. Yeah, my pleasure. Feel hey, like this Cynthia, you, Cynthia, I'm sorry to interrupt, Zach. You've been no, on no. our show maybe three times, I feel like. Yeah. Um, you certainly, uh, yeah, we did an interview, and then we had you and Don on. Right. Uh, Dragon Wilson, which was a great episode. And then uh, you've also contributed to our, um, whoops, to our live show, to our live um, right. uh, fundraiser, which we appreciate. And you, uh, I think it all started when you came on the show to talk about New York Ninja. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Way back when. But yeah. uh, I think the last time we had you on, you talked about your movie, Black Creek. You were in the process last time of trying to fund it. And where are you right now with Black Creek? Uh, well, we finished the movie uh, in November. We are in post-production right now. Uh, Every day we are working hard uh, with the editor on editing it. We have about 42 minutes of the film edited completely. Okay. So our goal is, is to be done uh, at the end of this month or maybe the first week in April with uh, the complete uh, edit. Then again, we go into, you know, uh, the, the music and color correction and Foley. And then we hope uh, by July, it'll be a complete product done. So That's awesome. We'll be That's ready awesome. for our red carpet screening then. Awesome. Yeah. If you need uh, two crack reporters to do the red carpet Q and a, we're more than happy to do that. <clears throat> oh, good. All right. You, you, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so for everyone that doesn't know, can you give us a brief synopsis of what black Creek is about? Yeah, it's uh, basically uh, it's a Western uh, that incorporates a lot of martial arts. I wanted to do something uh, different. I love Westerns. And I also Googled there weren't really that many uh, female gunslingers. Like, you know, you go back, maybe Annie Oakley or something like that. And if you Google it like modern day, you get like Selma Hyatt. So I was like, right. oh, my gosh, you know, I, I want to be that person. And um, I have the biggest cast of martial art actors. Um, mostly all the actors are former martial art champion. So they are the real deal. And um, we have incredible fight scenes in it. Uh, it's, it's dark, it's gritty, you know, it's not, um, you know, I, you know, I'm just so amazed with the editing. I wanted this really kind of dark, eerie, creepy look. So we did a lot of night shooting. Cool. And uh, we had, you know, it, it's it's such an awesome experience because if it wasn't for the backers, I wouldn't be able to do this movie. And they came in like so strong and with so much love for this product uh, that, uh, you know, we had some rough conditions. You know, we had a very shoot, uh, very short schedule and it was a pretty long movie to do. And like it was so cold at night, every night it was freezing. And, uh, you know, these uh, backers, we had like, I think the first three days, 150 people on set that it, it you know they wow. they were just there uh you know as we were shivering away <laughs> you know, and, and the hard part is like you know when you're doing fight scenes you know and it's like four o'clock in the morning your muscles are so tight and you can't stretch them out you feel like you can't even get your legs up but um uh the, the editing looks so awesome i think everybody involved in it is going to be so proud proud of the film and you shot this in arizona right yeah, we shot it at uh, the Mescal Ranch. Uh, all of our shooting actually was there. And that's where they shot Outlaw Josie Whale, Tombstone, Quick and the Dead. Cool. You know? So um, we also built a corral, you know, that we used as kind of like a fighting arena. And uh, Mescal Ranch loved it so much. They're keeping it as part of their oh. Uh, set. Oh, so wow. Cool. Big history there at the Mescal Ranch. <laughs> You you brought up Quick in the Dead. That's probably the last time I remember seeing a Western that was more female centric. And that was over 20 years ago. So it's we are more than due for a Western, especially a martial art Western, because I yeah. think I can't think of any American Westerns that have incorporated martial arts into their, you know, into the uh, mix the genres, I guess. Yeah, well, you see a little bit, you know, like people have done some where there's a little bit of fight here, a little bit of right. fight. But in this film, everybody knows how to fight, you know, so uh, um, 
it's 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 different. It's definitely, I think, going to shock people. Uh, it came from my brain of what I like to see, you know. So when you see it, it's like really, really, really dark because that's what yeah. I like. That's what I like to watch. So I kind of geared this movie on uh, movies that I like to see. Well, I remember when you were on our show last, I think it was last year, last March, last Martial Art Madness, and um, and you had brought up you loved uh, To Live and Die in L.A. That was one of your favorite movies back in the day, and how gritty that is. And yes. it's not a Western by any means, but just I love that idea that you're going to make it dark and, and intense. Yeah, I wish, um, I mean, I wish we had a bigger budget. We had more days to shoot because it could have been, you know, really, really phenomenal. But I hope, you know, when people see this, they say, wow, they did this for that much money and that short, you know, if they have like a lot more money, you know, what we could do with it, you know, so we're already uh, in the process of writing Black Creek 2, because we think this is going to be uh, a movie people are really going to enjoy, you know, and I have another little uh, twisted turn on the, on the sequel. Ooh. Oh, cool. Well, and, and speaking of uh, future projects, you're doing a graphic novel, right? Based on based on this movie or based on the sequel? Uh, based on this movie, uh, it's going to be a little different. See, um, I talked with Marlon Chup, who is our artist, and we've been talking for about 20 years about doing a graphic novel because I just, I just love graphic novels. I love comics, you know, and cool. we came up with so many different stories. And then, like, this story and these characters are so great. We said, let's do the graphic novel on this because we had a lot of the storyboards. Uh, what we're doing is it's based on it, but we're having new characters in it. Uh, we're doing backstories, like how did I learn martial arts? Who did I learn martial arts from, you know? Cool. And, and making it a little bit different and because you know you don't need a budget for this you can go crazy with your mind you know with just drawing it's it's going to be um you know it's going to be a little bit more over the top than uh the film that's awesome that's awesome yeah, and, and right and now we're, still, we're currently we have uh, i think we have 10 days left we're on indiegogo where people can go on there and the thing is it's just kind of like the movie one of the greatest things that uh, on black creek movie is you know our big incentive was that you could be in the movie and so many people have written me and saying you know this has been a lifetime dream of me to you know to be in a movie to be in an action star with all my heroes and uh same thing for the comic book you know um our biggest perk is that you can be a character and your likeness will be in it, you know? So we've had so many fun uh, incentives, like you can name your own character, but people can go to that. It's blackcreekgraphicnovel.com. Oh. We're going to get that up right here. Yeah. Right now. yeah. We'll have the links so yeah. everyone can go to that, awesome. go to that and check it out. I, by the way, I think that is so awesome. I obviously the incentive to be in your movie is one thing that's huge. And everybody did that, which is great. And we're looking forward to seeing like people that maybe we know that contributed that'll be in the film, but to also be immortalized with, you know, a drawing or however in care in, in graphic novel form, is going to be really, really rad. Oh, so I know. I, it's so exciting. I think, you know, anybody in it, it's going to be there forever, you know, right. and we have big plans with this. So we hope actually the movie and the graphic novel will be done at the same time. And we are in talks with a uh, black belt magazine of partnering up with some really great, great, great events and things that's going to coordinate Black Belt Magazine and uh, Black Creek Graphic Novel together. So I, awesome. I think you know, it's not just going to be, here's a book and put it away. You can show your relatives or your kids. It's going to be out there, you know. So um, really, really excited the way the whole um, process is going for the film and the graphic novel. Yeah, Did, uh, so yeah does does Black Creek novel that goes to your Indiegogo? I just want to make sure that I'm yeah, Black Creek graphic novel dot com. We'll take it. We'll take you. OK, OK, OK. okay. So, that, so that's that is in the uh, link for the YouTube. However, we're going to get it up here as well. Yeah. Cool. And we also have like a for an exclusive incentive, like the magazine cover. And also there's a, you know, you can be on one of the alternate covers and this will be this will be exclusive just to uh, backers only. Awesome. Awesome. And and just so everyone knows, and, and because we have quite a few people in the, the comments and the chat and whatnot, we are, if we can get to some questions in the time allotted, we will, if not save it for another interview down the road, because there will be more for sure. Um, but for everyone joining us and going, who the heck are these two guys with Cynthia? So we're $2 late fee. We are an eighties and nineties movie podcast. Uh, we celebrate every March. We celebrate martial art movies and our love of martial art films. Um, and every month we do a live trivia show and this is our first celebrity guest as, uh, as a, as a contestant <laughs> on the show 
And fortunately, I am the one who asked the questions and it's going to be Cynthia versus Dustin. And the way this works is uh, if you go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash $2 late fee, you can join our Patreon and be a part of the fun where Cynthia will be playing for a contestant, uh, for a patron, and Dustin will as well. And I get to ask the questions today. <laughs> um, but to be clear, patrons sign up, we play on your behalf, and you win yes. prizes. You win actual physical media prizes right. that's very exciting and you can put it on your bookshelf or or uh and never and never open it or like if zach just put it under that bed <laughs> behind it and never watch it um yeah, yeah he's got a huge collection um true. but so i just want to say so today it is very exciting we have two patrons that we are uh playing on behalf of and cynthia you are playing on behalf of our number one patron uh sylvia who is in germany is, I, I never know what time it is in Germany, but I, I know that it's <laughs> it's either late or early, or but she's always awake. She's always watching. She's always supporting the show. So we're really excited. Sylvia, uh, if you are watching, uh, give a little hello. Yeah. Okay, um, Sylvia. I yeah. hope I can do you well on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a good feeling about that. I have a good, oh, I don't a know. good feeling. He just <laughs> winks blatantly um into the camera you 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 might have thought that you were winking off the camera but wait till we um, get to you does your contestant dustin but we also like so um yes yeah, so my i will be playing on behalf of our good buddy jeff t hall in tennessee we just saw jeff a couple weeks ago he was out here we had a good time um and uh and jeff is uh in trouble because i my win percentage is like 10, 10, maybe six. But I got a good feeling. Six percent. Hello, um, Sylvia. She is here. <laughs> um, and uh, and welcome all you new watchers, listeners, et cetera. So yeah, um, and and before, and I'm just gonna jump ahead right and say we don't take ourselves too seriously. So if we ask a question, you're like, what? What kind of question is that? We're trying to be silly, so it's all good. It's always good to explain silliness ahead of time. Yeah. You should also explain all your jokes, Zach. Why don't you just explain the jokes? Well, do you, I do think... you have any just kiddings you want to get out of the way before we start? No, nope, nope. I think I'm ready to start with question number one. Um, but... Cynthia, knows, Cynthia knows that this is our banter. It's very uh, <laughs> politely antagonistic. Um, um, <laughs> so I instead of doing a, normally I do a coin flip, but because Cynthia is our guest and we want to honor that, she's going to get to go first with the first question of the day. So uh, if she gets it correct, you'll hear a ding, ding, ding. If she gets it wrong, you'll hear a... <laughs> yes. And a uh, fun fact, that is actually the music from The Price is Right. It just slowed down a little bit. So if, if anyone's cared... Um, <laughs> Okay, so question number one, Cynthia. What is a pig's favorite martial art move? A pig's favorite martial art move? Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, a scorpion tail kick? <laughs> wow, that's a really good answer, but I'm un unfortunately it's not oh. correct. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm so off on our, our thing. St stand by, here's our horn. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia, sorry. And by the way, by the way, the first five wins. So we're. Oh just wait, I do know it. Do I get a second chance? Uh, sure. The favorite martial art move. Yes. A chop. I'm gonna give you that. It, I'm. I, I would have gone with pork chop, but I will go with chop. For okay. That. So you get it correct. <laughs> I don't know why our questions are like dad jokes from the eighties, but uh, I, I don't. Was just I, I, I don't know why these are riddle books I from I like, uh, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that that was courtesy of my my wife said you should get you got you should tell some dad jokes on the show, and then my son Bodie was like you gotta you gotta do some dad jokes on the show. So we got the, one or two. The, another one might pop up. But we're gonna go back and the forth. Two people that one. don't watch the show are giving advice wow. on dad jokes. My Thank son you, listens to the show. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm gonna go. Over is up. Good, good work, good work. Cynthia is up. Uh, there we go. There yeah, we go. I, it's, it's I, my brain has to like kick in a little bit. It's okay. I get. I'm giving you guys softball questions to start. To start. Uh, so, with that being said, Dustin, this Great. question is for you. What '80s martial art TV show also shares the name of a Chuck Norris film from 1992? I believe uh, 
The answer is sidekicks. That is correct. And it's weird to do the bell for myself. There it is. Oh, Dustin, you're good. <laughs> no, I'm not good. I'm not good. We just had we were just talking about that like yesterday or <laughs> a month ago or whatever it was. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. We so uh two dollar late fee has a wrestling podcast show called Territory Marks that I host with Paul London. He's a professional wrestler. And uh Dustin joined us for the episode we just recorded with uh Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and he as a he's not a martial artist, but he is a professional wrestler who starred guest starred on an episode of Sidekicks, which starred Gil Gerard and Ernie Reyes Jr. back in 1986. So I think Ernie Reyes was like maybe 10 years old at the time, I believe nine, even younger. Anyways, so we, OK, so we're tied one to one we are tied one to one. We're gonna get our here we go. Our Cynthia website up there. Cynthia, yeah. some of these questions may be uh, about you and your career. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what you know about yourself or, oh, and I don't. Like <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Cynthia, in 1997, you guest starred on a reunion special for a popular CBS television series from the late 70s, early 80s. What was the name of that show? Dukes of Hazard. Correct. Whoa, <laughs> hey, that's... Maybe that one. Awesome. Sorry, um, our, our horns are, our bells are late. For some reason. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> uh, by the way, um, for for a for a quick bonus point, do you remember your character's name on that show? Bertha Joe Butler. Wow. <laughs> full full name. <laughs> Bertha <laughs> Joe Butler. Um, what? So, can you tell us quickly about that role on Dukes of Hazard, the reunion? Yeah, I mean, it, it was really, really uh, fun. You know, um, I went in and I knew Catherine Bach a little bit because she was on martial law. So it was I was really excited you know, to meet her. But I was also nervous, too, because it was, you know, the infamous cast of uh, the Dukes of Hazard, And uh, my character was her best friend. And um, in the end, she was going to marry. Uh, what, what, what's his name? Oh, I'm, I can't think uh, of that. Luke Wander. or Duke? Luke. Wander. I think it's Luke, right? Yeah, Duke? Tom, Pat, and... John, John Schneider. Yeah, John Schneider. And then she decides she wanted to get married. And then Bubba was there. And he was this big, 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 big guy. And I was like, oh, he's so handsome. Well, let's not waste a wedding. you know. And, I, and Bertha ends up marrying <laughs> Bubba. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I get to do, uh, like, fighting in it. It was really fun. Um, I remember the night... Before though, I I um, I started getting a cold, so I went to uh, a Chinese herbalist, and he gave me some herbs, and they had penicillin in it. And I'm allergic to penicillin, and oh, I had no. like all over my body. And I oh, remember no. going into the makeup artist gave me makeup to cover, and she goes, "I'm not touching that." But yeah, oh I have god, body, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is like my big opportunity to do something <laughs> in a martial art movie, right?" And I uh, I get this like insane cold. <laughs> oh man wow. yeah oh my gosh that well uh, is brutal that's yeah and and i was gonna say this is like um uh, love is blind before love is blind was even a thing on netflix i know it's a very popular show right now and the way you're describing the wedding like i don't want to waste the money on this wedding i might as well just get married to bubba does um, that happen on love is blind i feel like that happened that was such an 80s device like don't let, let's not waste the wedding well, I, I was Everybody's here, you know, and, <laughs> right. <laughs> Does anyone else want to get me? We got this set. <laughs> um, but, but I think if that happened, that would be the craziest thing to ever experience, like being in part of it or being at a wedding where somebody's like that person left and we don't want to waste it. I think it's kind of a good idea if you think about it. Like if you go to a wedding, let, I'm just saying hypothetically, you go to a wedding, it's a beautiful wedding. And then you're like with your date there. Maybe you've been, together for quite some time and you lean over and be like you know we should do this and suddenly they go you got the minister here can we go ahead and get married now too would, would that be okay just like a two for one deal but it's never a two for one deal like the it's always that you know one wedding is destroyed yes that's and true. then another people and then somebody else steps up and says well i love your mother you know it's like oh right and we're supposed to feel like really awesome about it so i i think it would be more like that like if if the bride right because what was the scenario cynthia like who did somebody, she somebody was wasn't married to John Schneider. You were supposed yeah. to get married to John Schneider. So did John Schneider, did he not show up? 
No, he showed up. I think uh, she was just uh, hesitant about whether she really wanted to do it, you know, and, and focus more on herself, you know. Oh, instead. interesting. Okay. Yeah. And d did John Schneider take it well <laughs> in the episode? Like, what? Because you're like, about. yes. <laughs> I he got in his, I gotta got in his it, yeah, we have to watch that now. Yeah. And um and Bubba in hindsight, <laughs> I'm sure he was. I in hindsight, I think he I think uh Bertha Joe made a good decision, don't you think, Dustin? To go with Bubba? Yeah, over John Schneider. <laughs> yeah, 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 certainly. Um <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny when I went in, I had an audition for it. He was sitting next to me, and we were both talking about like how nervous we were, like going in, and then we both got the part. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bubba, you and Bubba, yeah, yeah, right on, <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> you had that, that oh, chemistry. I asked Dustin that one, <laughs> right? Ask me who, who played Bubba. Um, so just to be clear, so so Cynthia got two points on that because she, she knew did, her so it's now name. three to one, so it is three to one. However, Dustin, you may be able to tie with the, with this next question. Copy that. All right. Okay. So, uh, okay, Dustin. Everyone knows you love the martial artist Ted Jan Roberts. <clears throat> mm, mm -hmm. And um, this is already, he is, this is a.k.a. Go the back. magic kid. Yeah. Uh, and but my question for you is, how are Cynthia and Ted connected to the film the Lost Boys from 1987. How are Cynthia and Ted connected to the Lost Boys in 1987? Could be a two point question. Seven. Yes. Um, the 1987 film The Lost Boys. How are Cynthia and Ted Jan Roberts connected to that film? Uh, they both had breakfast with Corey Haim that day. That is uh, unfortunately incorrect. Okay. It will not be a two-parter. Cynthia, did, are you familiar with Ted Jan Roberts? No. Okay. Miss, <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> out the one. Uh, so, anyways, Ted Jan Roberts. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna I'm assuming you probably don't know the answer to this question. Uh, yeah, I my my guess was going to be they both worked with Corey Haim. <laughs> well, well, uh, I mean, I'm willing to potentially give you a point on that, and Dustin, you and I can discuss. But the answer to this question is Ted Jan Roberts starred alongside Corey Feldman in A Dangerous Place, and Cynthia, you starred along Corey Haim in Fast Getaway. The connection right. being both. Oh actors my God. The Lost Boys. Okay. And license to drive, but you know, the Lost Boys. Got it. So it is. So the two parter is Fast Getaway and, and dangerous A Dangerous place. place. Yeah. That would have okay. been my other thing. So That's I'm, I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to let, I'm going to say Cynthia does not get a point on that one. Yeah. I would agree with you on that. However, uh, Cynthia, you did do two, ver two uh, Fast Getaway films, you Fast Getaway one and two with Corey Haim. And yes. How was that for you? Was was working with Corey Haim? Was that a pleasurable experience? Was it okay? Yeah, you know, it, it was it was fun. Um, it, he was like I think eighteen or nineteen at the time, right. you know, and he was a little rascal. And <laughs> I we were doing this uh, fight scene, and I had high heels on, and I had to like stomp him in the chest with a big stiletto, oh, and I. Man put a pad on and he was like oh no i don't need a pad i said no even if i just tap you with that heel it's gonna hurt and he's like no he wouldn't put a pad on so i did it and i tapped him you know and he was fine and we, we <laughs> did movie. then the next day we come to set and Corey's not there and they're like the producer comes up to me and she's really angry and she's going oh we can't shoot today and i'm like why because you punctured Corey hames lung and oh. i said what? Whoa. what? She goes, yeah, you punctured his lung. He can't shoot. And I'm like, punctured his lung? Punctured I his off, right? lung? So there's no shooting. And I'm like going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And, and I go back to, you know, my hotel and, and I hear this music. And, you know, back in those days, they had this big boom box. And Corey Ham right. is there playing and he's dancing to the boom box. And I'm like, what are you doing? They're saying I punctured your lung. He goes, nah, you didn't. I just didn't want to work today. <laughs> oh, this story <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> oh yeah yeah so way to throw you under the bus I was, like so nervous I was, like, oh, 
he hates me. And like, you know, like I, I injured him, but I knew I just like tapped him, you know, and like punctured his oh, Like both. My God. So now, so now you have to wonder like if that was part of his play the whole time, you know, if he was like, I'm not going to wear this pad because then I'm, I'm, you know, any bruising or whatever will support my story. But like no one else sees him dancing to two boom box. I know. <laughs> I thought, I thought you were dead today. Nope. <laughs> just didn't want to work. That's anyway, <laughs> hit it, Rockapella. Like what? What's he doing? <laughs> that's a, that's, that's a wild. Thank you for sharing that story. Cause you know, obviously we love those stories. We oh, don't yeah. get a lot of those stories. You yeah. know, you don't hear a lot of the, the, the yeah. So, uh, that's amazing. so that's, that is gold. So it was worth a wrong answer, I guess is what we're saying. That it was worth gold. a wrong answer. <laughs> that's so great. Yeah. Um, and that's okay, a great so, question, Zach, by the way. It's a great question. I see it now from the broad picture. Um, you know, I was thinking in the small, like, there's got to be one thing that connects everybody and i thought you know that cynthia was like well ted you know ted jan roberts was my mentee and like i taught him everything you know no i think i think uh me asking yeah. cynthia if she knows who ted jan roberts is and saying no is a pretty good sound bite too so <laughs> we love yeah. ted jan roberts yeah. um okay so dustin it goes back to you because cynthia got that wrong as well ted if you're watching uh hello yeah and ted yeah we <laughs> watched you on the show come on since <laughs> um okay so dustin <laughs> dustin philip Ree, martial art sensation philip ree has starred in four four best of the best movies <laughs> how many of those four movies best of the best did eric roberts co-star in okay i didn't even know that there were first of all that there were four of them so great work franchise if you had yeah. said how many best of the best i would have said three but there were four Fair. eric Fair. roberts i'm gonna say he was in uh two of them that is correct Okay. Waiting for this. It's such a, it's like he a was in best of the best one and best of the best two. Unfortunately, he did not join um, Philip for the other two films. Cynthia, are you familiar with Philip's work? Do you know Philip at all? Philip Ree? I know him. Yeah. Uh, back in the day before we were both doing movies, we used to compete together. And I remember cool. my first big competition was the Long Beach Internationals that Ed Parker used to do, and he was there. And that was my first uh, my first competition in California. It just came out for that uh, for that tournament because it was the biggest one in the world. Wow! Amazing. Is is it still is it still considered one of the largest larger uh, competitions? Uh, you know what? They're still doing it. They brought it back. It was gone for a while, and then um, Steve Cooper took it back. And actually, I'm gonna. Uh, be at this next one i haven't been to it like probably in you know 35 years you know uh very cool i think it's 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 getting popularity again i don't uh i don't know if it would be the biggest one right now but uh definitely it, you know they're trying to get back to where it was back in the day and you're going to the one this year you said yeah yeah it'll be i think it's um it's the end of august september so i'll be there at, at the internationals the tournament and they're also doing a hall of fame that i'm inducted into the night before so oh well, bury the lead on that that's a big deal <laughs> incredible <laughs> okay and hopefully at this point uh black creek will be out and for everyone to watch and see and you'll be the graphic novels go to blackcreekgraphicnovel.com for everyone listening not watching yeah. uh, and, and oh, support and, it yeah also i'll be in denver uh in uh, april with philip and simon uh, at a martial art con. And this is the first time anything like this has ever been uh, done. It's just a bunch of uh, martial art actors that like to doing it like, you know, like a comic con. And it's just, it's called martial art con. So I'll see them and I haven't <clears throat> seen them again. a long, long, long time. That's very exciting. And, and I, and it's a long time coming for a convention like that specifically. Yeah. Um, that's so awesome. Hey, Cynthia, have you heard anything about uh, in November? We understand from our friend Craig Sutton, who runs the Last Dragon tribute page, that um, you know every year they kind of celebrate the Last Dragon in New York City is something called the Urban Action Showcase. Yeah. Are you are you attending that this year? Do you have plans to, or maybe it's still early? I know. No, so. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I usually do. Um, I've done it ever since it started, and then a couple times I had to miss it because I was working. So I guess we we haven't really talked about it this year. But also at the Denver Con, Time Mac will be there as well. Okay. 
Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, we just talked about him on our last dragon episode with uh, Craig Sutton and brought up the fact that he was on an episode of a TV show called a different world, which uh, we all kind of speculated did not do his career favors by the character that he played because he was such a heartthrob at the time. And then he goes on to play a very unlikable guy in a different world. And it really soured people's opinions of, of the, you know, the character or the actor. Yeah. What do you mean? Unlikable guy, Zach? What do you mean? <laughs> well, he, he was, he was, <laughs> what, what did he, what was his character? He, he assaulted his girlfriend in that episode. Yeah. What else, Zach? What else did he do? What else? <laughs> My son's sitting <laughs> here, so. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay. No comment. Um, okay. But yeah, we love Time Mock, and we love a lot, The Last Dragon, and what, what a unique film. And, you know, rough segue into my next question for Cynthia. You starred in Martial Law back in the day, uh, but there was a CBS TV series of the same name later on, about a, you know, almost a decade later. And uh, who starred in that television series? Sam O'Hung. Correct. Look at that. You know, you have, you're, like, you've been doing great in this contest. <laughs> um, Sam O'Hung, you were in, was it well, Millionaire's Express, right? Yeah. Uh, you want to know a funny story, too? Please, okay. yeah. I have a story on everything. I know you, I yeah. I met with Sam O, and I said, Sam O, we need to do a TV show together. And, and he's like, really, TV? And I says, no, TV's getting big here. You know, in America, we should do like a a, a, a buddy picture, a cop picture. And he went and did it, but he didn't use the <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he gave me the idea. <laughs> That's amazing. Sammo, yeah. shame on you, Sammo. Shame <laughs> on you. <laughs> That's a great idea. That's a really good idea. By the way, though, I and just, and just an aside, I think it's great. It was so wonderful to see Sam O'Hung in a television series here in the United States uh, after, obviously, Jackie Chan having so much, so much success. So I, I wouldn't say Sam O, you know, he, he's well known in the United States, but to put him on a lead show for a television series was kind of a big deal back in the day. So, yeah, but yeah, really. Mm -hmm. But it would have been even better if you were his co-star. Absolutely. <laughs> I There's no doubt about that. OK, so it is now four to two, correct, Dustin? It four is to three. four to two. All right. Well, Dustin, you have the potential to uh, score a bonus point on this as well, if you get it correct. And by the way, thank you to everyone in the chat who's giving all those great comments. If we have time at the end, we'll get to some of your questions. But, you know, time remaining, we got about a half hour left at the most. Um, yep. This is a music question, Dustin. And don't hey. worry, Cynthia, I have a music question for you coming up. And I, I <laughs> catered these. I catered these for the both of you. That's so very you're welcome you. in advance. That's, I uh, thank you in advance. Dustin, one of Dustin's favorite bands is Huey Lewis and the News. <clears throat> Besides Back to the Future, Dustin, name another 80s movie. If you can name more than one, you'll get a bonus point. But name another 80s movie that Huey Lewis and the News had a song in. So this is the potential to get two bonus points. One, if you can name oh, more than one movie. Man. Or two, if you can name the movie and the song that is featured in said movie. This is a really good question. And just um, to just to give you a heads up, there are there are eight other films. Eight in the movies. 80s. Oh, wow. Eight other films in the eighties that Huey Lewis. Eighties. That's yes. that's not including television. That's just uh, on in, in movies, theatrical. Oh boy, this is gonna bother me. This is going to shoot me in the butt. Um, oh, you're welcome in the chat. Well, and okay. And no one in the chat, by the way. No one helped Dustin in the chat. Right. Well, I'm not, I'm not I, I wouldn't look okay. into the chat. I mean, come on. I'm a professional. Darn it. Uh, this is really terrible, though. I don't, um, uh, da -da -da -da, nothing is coming to, uh, and, and uh, if I say back to the future, this is, no, I don't say back to the future too, right? It's not like this kind of thing. Correct. It does right. not include the back to the future franchise. Okay. That is what you said. All oh, right. So, yeah. um, da -da 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 -da. oh boy. I don't know. I'm drawing total blank. It's okay. Cause this total is blank. actually really surprising to me. Um, I'm going to list off those quick quickly i'm going to list off those movies and the songs that were in the in the movie so in 1984 the wildlife featured walking on a thin line which is one of my favorite Huey wait Lewis a songs. minute really 
Yep, it's but we, listed. We covered that it, movie. We didn't. It's not on the soundtrack, about, uh, basically, but it's in the movie. It's in the movie. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, the Sure Thing, a year later, had Heart of Rock and Roll with John Cusack. Okay, so I, this is just like any time a Huey Lewis, uh, any time a Huey Lewis song has just been in a movie. Yes. You're saying, yes. But you did you phrase the question as a soundtrack? No, I said in the movie. You said in the movie. Okay, please continue. Yeah. I mean, either way, it's, it's no, it's okay. Fine. FX, American later. Psycho, American Psycho. Oh no, no, no. But I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't get. Uh, well, FX had Harder Rock and Roll, Fire with Fire, Harder Rock and Roll, Amazon Women on the Moon. If this is it. But then Big in 1988 had Working for a Living. That was the one I was hoping you would get. Big had Working for a Living? Yes. Oh, wow. And then there was a couple more, but the Whiz Kid had I Want a New Drug. And then the Whiz Kid is... Ted. I haven't seen that in forever. Anyway, so you did not get a question for that, but I'm going to go over to Cynthia with a similar question. Wow. We know that the Bee Gees, the Bee Gees are one of your favorite bands of all the time. In fact, uh, Nights on Broadway is one of the best songs ever. Yeah, we love that. I, yeah, we both do. Um, of course, in the 70s, they had the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack, but can you name a movie in the 80s that featured a Bee Gees song? Another one. Oh, in the, in the 80s. I should be this one. Um, uh, let me think. Let me think. Um, would it have been a Barbara Streisand movie? No, that's a good no. question, okay. but no. Okay, I was thinking, I was thinking of you know that remake that they that um Bradley Cooper did. Um, oh, yes, yeah, Star is Born. Born. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking because I know that Barry Gibbon. Barbara Streisand did that duet together. Right. Okay, let's pick another BG song. Um, oh. <laughs> um, I can give you a multiple choice if you would like for this one. Okay. Okay. So your multiple choice for this is Airplane, Police Academy, or Amazon Women on the Moon. Oh, I'm going to say... Um, Airplane. Correct. <laughs> right. Now, Dustin. When Ted, when Ted is, it's a flashback. Right. Staying Alive is played in 1980s oh. Airplane, by the way. That movie came out 44 years ago, which is blowing wow. my mind. Wow. Uh, I would have also accepted the sequel to Saturday Night Fever, Staying Alive with. Oh, right. I, yeah. They, right. Right, looking Amazing. is probably as hunkiest in that, and uh, Ooh, I and I would have. I know another one. Didn't they do Islands of the Stream, or no, 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 no? That well, was a Dolly Parton movie. Wait, no, no, but didn't didn't the, I think the Bee Gees wrote that song? They, wrote they did it. write. That. They wrote it. Yeah, they wrote it. But their yeah. actual song was not in the movie. Right, yeah. right, okay. no, but. But then I, I I found a randomly I found a, a, an Asian film called The Executioner. That has staying alive in it, and it was Chow Yun, one of Chow Yun Fat's first movies he ever did. Oh my gosh! Right, I that bet came you out in nineteen. Right for that too. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. I remember, All right. seeing, wow. I remember seeing a Hong Kong movie, right? Because because um, when I was there, uh, I had to go to the theater. That was it. I didn't really have too much to do, you know. And I had to watch the Chinese movies, and um, they had the Jaws theme. And it was like, can they can they use that? They're like, oh no, copyrights don't don't mean anything here. That was a job, you know, that famous. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. it's funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. Um, I believe. Well, Dustin, you can actually. What, where, where are we at? I think Cynthia won, right? The game is over, everybody. Congratu <laughs> we, like, we're totally remiss. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to Cynthia. Congratulations to you, Sylvia. Um, as you have won once again. Well, so S Sylvia, Sylvia has the choice of uh, three Blu-rays, two two courtesy of Kino, one courtesy of Shout Factory. Uh, that she has the choice of either No Retreat, No Surrender, which stars Kurt McKinney and Jean Claude Van Damme. Kurt McKinney, obviously, uh, Cynthia knows very well. And I think you're both going to be in The Last Kumite, which is coming yeah, out. Yeah. Well. Um, actually, it was so great to see when we shot The Last Kumite uh, last year. You know, I, it was so exciting for me to see Kurt because I haven't seen him since 
what no retreat no surrender that was the second movie i ever did i think that was like in 1986 so i have yeah, no, re- no retreat oh no wait, no retreat no 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 sorry Sworn to justice. She yeah, was sworn to justice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. In sworn to justice, we did. So I haven't seen him since 1997. That's wild. So that was 97 when sworn to justice came out. But he was supposed to do no retreat part two. He was, and we talked to Kurt about that. And uh, you yeah. were in the sequel, which starred, I believe, a Lauren Avenden. Yeah, he played his part. And uh, the funny thing is, you know, Yun Kui directed it, famous Hong Kong director. And when we got to set, they never told uh, they never told uh, Yun Kui that Van Damme wasn't going to be in it. And they never told me Kurt McKinney wasn't going to be in it. So they introduced, uh, Yun Kui introduced uh, Kurt, uh, Lauren Avedan at, as the director uh, <laughs> of No Retreat, No Surrender. And I thought it was Kurt McKinney. And I'm thinking, how could someone look so different on film and in no. real life? Wow. I, just, I didn't know. I still, I thought it was Kurt McKinney, you know? So that those two uh, at the last minute backed out and Matthias Hughes got the Van Damme part. Yes. Yes. And, and Matthias is, have you, besides that film, um, what, I think he's in the last Kumite as well. He is. Yeah, he is. Uh, what, what's your connection to the last Kumite? Like how that's coming out. Uh, I may, might already be out on Blu-ray, I believe. Yeah and order it on Amazon, I think, okay. uh, right now. And uh, I know, um, you know, the producer, Sean Lowe. So um, I just play a cameo in it. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't do a lot of martial arts. <laughs> I kind of do the ending martial art uh, kick. But uh, it was so much fun, you know, to work with, with all these people. And uh, actually, Kurt McKinney and Matthias Hughes, I want to put them in uh, part two of Black Creek. I think that definitely has to happen. I think, you know, and, and you said you have a cameo with uh, minimal or no martial arts. I think people just like seeing you on screen and just appreciate seeing you on screen again. Like Black Creek, we cannot wait to see this film because you can you run down some of the people that are in Black Creek for some of the people that fans might know? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, Don the Dragon Wilson is in it. Um, who else is in it? Uh, Richard Norton, uh, Benny Urquidez. Keith Vitale, Keith Cook from China O'Brien is in it. And then you'll see yes. a lot. Of, you'll see a Marcus Taylor is in it um, from in and what was it down and out in LA or something that will be there. And then um, we yep. have a lot of masters like you'll see Stephen Hayes and uh, Steve Ross. And um, what I wanted to do is, you know, I would have loved to people like, why didn't you have this movie? Why don't you have this person? Why do you have Jackie Chan? I'm like, oh my God, Jackie Chan. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, my, my budget isn't even as per diem, but um, right, right. <laughs> you know, I, I, I could only have some, we had, we had the character list, like, you know, kind of limited because we knew what our budget is. So I didn't have everybody in it, which I would have loved to, but uh, definitely, right. you know, all my friends. And that was my, uh, my feeling when I did do my own movie, I wanted to put my martial art friends in it. Yeah. And you know, it's funny when people ask questions like that, why didn't you get Bruce Lee? Well, Bruce Lee's dead. No, no. I mean like do the AI version of Bruce Lee. No. No, yeah. it doesn't work that way. Well, um, I was just saying the whole act of like being like, I made this movie and everyone's just like crapping all over it. They're like, yeah, but did you get a... Did you get this? Did you get this person? It would have been really cool if you did. Yeah. Like, um, all right, I, I also want to bring up the fact that, yeah, you're doing a China O'Brien reunion, so to speak, in the film with, uh, with Richard and Keith. And China O'Brien 1 and 2 come out on Blu-ray here in the United States in May from Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, it'll be celebrating its 35th anniversary, I think, next year. Yeah. So hopefully, um, I'm, I'm just basically asking you now, maybe we can do a reunion of uh, the three of you guys on for Martial Art Madness for next year. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome. You know, one of the things I want to do now that I have my production company, I would love to do China O'Brien 3. But it is yeah. so hard. I can't find out who owns the rights. I'm trying. I'm trying. So if anybody right. else here knows who owns the rights for China O'Brien, uh, you know, I would I would love to do that. That's... I'd love to do Black Creek 2 and then uh, China O'Brien 3. And again, make it really dark and gritty, you know. Oh, it's, it's got to yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm hoping you guys can just humor me for one question that I didn't get to ask either of you <clears throat> that I was kind of excited to ask really quickly about China O'Brien specifically. Um, and then I'll open it up to either of you to answer this question. But um, Tori Amos had a song on the 
on the soundtrack to China O'Brien, right? And the song is called Distant Storm. But do either of you know the name of the band that is listed as performing Distant Storm in the movie China O'Brien? I assume it was the Rolling Stones. I assume. Tori um, Amos sang the vocal. She's the vocalist for this band. Yeah. yeah. Wait, uh, Cynthia, do you know? Please, I'm deferring to you if you... Do I know? No. Yeah, you do I not know. know. Wait, so Zach, you're saying that Tori Amos is the vocalist of a, of a fake band or what? No, no, it's a band that performed the song. The song listed on the the band. Uh, so she's not listed as the you know on the soundtrack. It doesn't say by Tori Amos. Okay. Under it says but it is her. Th it is her song. You're saying it is her. Yeah, okay. she's the vocalist for it. The band is called Tess Makes Good. Tess Makes Good. Oh. Speaking of music, you know, I'll tell you on, on a Black Creek, I have one of my my main theme song was written by Jim Peterick. And, uh, and remind, to, yeah, tell everybody who that is. Yeah, from uh, he he wrote uh, "Eye of the Tiger." Right, Survivor. amazing. And Survivor, yeah. So he wrote. He amazing. Wrote I'm so excited about it. I love it. Um, and, and that's another thing. What we have, I have an incredible Mark Shear. Uh, it, um, my music team is so good. So I, I'm so excited. I can't wait till we get into the music part once we get edited. But. Um, for him to come on board at just because he was a fan and he liked, he liked the movie, you know, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's really exciting. And then sincerely, everybody who hasn't uh, checked out black Creek, dot com black creek movie dot com black uh, creek graphic novel you can black creek graphic novel dot com go to that Support. link check it out because it, it's it's not just it's not just the fact that you are are doing a new movie it's a passion project for you it's something you've wanted to do for quite some time something you put your blood sweat and tears into and that's going to be fulfilled on screen and how wonderful is that it's inspirational really you know i don't care if you've been in the business for x amount of years or you're just starting out the fact that you're getting it done and you've got so many fans all, all around the world that want to support you and be a part of it in some small way and thank you for allowing everyone to be a part of your movie that's really wonderful yeah i had a lot of you know people saying oh you know your movie uh, like you know because there's a little bit of jealousy out there your movie's gonna suck because you know you're not having some of the people in it aren't actors you know they're, they're backers and you know right. they just brought it on at, at the acting was so good like we we kind of went a lot on uh zoom you know because people were from all over the world and working oh, on wow and uh the fight scenes you know i mean it just it, it to me it actually was like a real blessing everything just fell in place and i i think you know i am so proud i'm so proud of our backers of their acting of their spirit of their love um and you know the good thing is that this we've created a black creek family now everybody yeah. became so close because it was not an easy shoot to do it was very yeah. very difficult and you know just the morale and the spirit and everybody just there uh, to support this project was just uh, overwhelming love. You know, I, it's, it's, it really is a blessing. So it's not just a picture to me. It's like, it's just uh, a collaboration of everybody's love pulling together to support me, which is, you know, more important even than the picture that, you know, everybody came to, to that support. It's just awesome. Totally. Totally. And, and, in in this, in 2024, it's it's a super different ball game than it ever has been as far as media is concerned. So, you know, the success for this film is very much open. Like anything can happen, right? Yeah. Because of the way social media works, the way things get promoted, the way things get, you know, uh, what do you call that? Where it's it 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 just becomes a big deal overnight because uh, maybe somebody blasts something on TikTok and then next thing you know, it's everyone's talking about Black Creek. So let's keep it going. Keep that conversation going. And um, and again, congratulations for winning the contest. And Sylvia, you're, we will just, uh, by the way, Sylvia, Sylvia gets a, her choice of Blu-ray. Like I said, Hard Target, um, No Retreat, No Surrender, or Ninja 3, The Domination, starring Sho Kasugi in an amazing 80s sweater. If you haven't seen that one, it was really great. Um, and for everyone wondering live, this will be, if you didn't catch it now, you can rewatch it. Uh, this will be launched next week on our podcast feed. Everybody can check that out as well. 
Um, Cynthia, thank you so much for being on our show and being a part of this. Well, thank you. It's always fun. I always uh, in, enjoy this show. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, make me laugh. So um, thank you. For Thanks for coming back. My Sunday off with on a good note. <laughs> Right on. Yes. That's always, it's all about positivity today. It's all yes. about positivity. Yes. I want to, maybe all be as comfortable as your dog over your yeah, shoulder. Yeah, I know. She's very, oh, uh, my yeah, it, it wasn't boring to her at all. She's, oh, very, my goodness. she's like, oh, it was so comfortable. It Mine got up and left. So apparently she didn't like my yeah, question. Yeah, right. I just, I just had enough. She was like, pork chop. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she thought there was something to eat. Well, my, my other dad joke, my other dad joke really quickly was, um, what kind of martial arts do birds practice? Wing Chun. <laughs> what? Uh, Cynthia got it. I, I mean, she's being kind. She's laughing. Yeah, not. I, I Wing don't know. Chun? What is it? Why, what is that? What do you mean? You just throw in an Asian word at the end of wing? No, Wing Chun is a, that's a fitting. <laughs> oh, it's an actual martial arts. What's yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> Why well, I didn't ask that question, apparently. <laughs> and we can, maybe we can have Tori and still was like, just like. Mm. Well, I'm Tori sure there's can that that. bird style kung fu. I mean, you know, remember in, in the 80s or even even before uh, in the 60s, in the 70s, I think every martial art movie had some kind of animal, whether it was like crab style, lobster style, bear style. Oh, the, those movies were hysterical. <laughs> well, yeah, on uh, over on Podcasting After Dark, we just broke down a movie called uh, Knockabout with uh, with uh, Yun Bao and Sammo is in that as well, I think. And yeah, it's like snake versus. Um, yeah. Eagle style, I think. Yeah, well, the snake and the eagle shadow. Yes, Probably. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Jackie Chan did the snake, and I think someone did eagle. Yeah, that was like when I first uh, Hong Kong movie I ever saw. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Sylvia. Um, don't yeah. go anywhere. We're going to. Really okay. Uh, and Wait, you, said, you said Sylvia, but you, did you. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And also, congrats to Sylvia. Did I? <laughs> yes. yes. Congrats to Sylvia. Yes. And thank you, Cynthia. Yes. And uh, Jeff, we're sorry, but it's Dustin's fault that you lost that you didn't. Yep. Win. Yep. It's too many dad jokes, Jeff. Hey. If there were less dad jokes, I would have. No, it has nothing to do with that. My son likes them. Didn't you have a joke too? No way, to Bodhi. You don't like oh, that. Yeah, you really, really like quick. That. Come over, come over here. here. Bodhi's Bodhi. got a joke, really quick. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> <laughs> to get to the dojo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wing Chun. <laughs> Wing Chun go <Gojo. laughs> I mean, by the way, don't uh, don't search for dad jokes, uh, kid friendly karate get dad jokes, because a lot of inappropriate ones come up, unfortunately. So who would have thought? Okay, All right. Well. Thank, thank you. Go to blackcreekgraphicnovel.com and support Black Creek the movie. Um, All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for everybody for watching. And uh, hey, we do have an interview, by the way, with, with Kurt McKinney talking about the No Retreat, No Surrender 2 story and why he did not do that. Um, if yes. If anyone's interested. In, in, yeah, Martial in, Art Madness. In the archives. All, and Martial yeah. Art Madness all month long. We got all, all the stuff. So uh, thank you, everybody. And we'll see you later. <laughs>